Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous, and today I am back with another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. So, yesterday, I met the male version of Karen. He shall be called Darren. My agency put on what's called the Disability Athletics Festival at a local college this weekend. We had booths and events set up all over the employee parking area. This will be important later. Towards the end of the day, I am managing the heck no you can't come park here area. Darren pulls up with his kids and says, you need to let me in, I'm disabled, and I'm an employee. Okay Darren, everyone at the event is disabled, there is no employee parking here today, but you're welcome to go over to the lot where literally everyone has parked and wait for the tram that is running every 5 minutes. Darren runs through the parking barriers and parks anyway. Yeah, I don't get paid enough for this. No disabled plaque or staff sticker. Screw you, Darren. Looks like we've moved on from just having Karens to having Darrens. <laughs> but seriously, I just love it when people try to get special treatment and this situation is perfect because literally everyone is the exact same. Everyone has disabilities. And that's why they have the parking with the tram because people have disabilities so they need to park over there but they'll have a tram come and pick them up some background i am half korean anyone who is familiar with korean culture knows there's kind of no such thing as boundaries there's even jokes about how your boss will walk into your bathroom while you're on the throne to give you some free fruit we regularly have koreans who just walk into our home without knocking and then look offended that we're present in our own house we don't look 100 percent korean and my dad is white so i guess i understand some of the surprise when they're expecting to buy kimchi from my korean grandmother not only that but korean culture is all about respecting people older than you so older generations who immigrated to the u.s tend to be oblivious and entitled more background i have two older brothers and we all play games we were lucky enough to have an xbox and playstation for our tv and two computers to game on this was just enough that if we all wanted to game, we could occupy ourselves with a TV or a computer. I was about 8 or 9 years old. EM visited several times because Koreans like to talk to each other and gossip, even if they're strangers. She let her boys, ranging from about 8 years to 12 years, run rampant, and the three of them ran up the stairs and demanded to play on our setups. My brothers and I were confused, but we figured it was a one-time deal the first time and let them hang out and hog the gaming systems while we watched and stood around awkwardly. Unfortunately, they were there for most of the day and EM all the while would feed them our food from our fridges. Asians tend to have more than one fridge. If we asked to play on one, they'd throw a little fit and complain about how they didn't have any systems and it wasn't fair. Every time they came over, the kids just ran straight up the stairs and got on. EM made no move to control her kids other than to make them pig out. This repeated every weekend for about three weeks. Evidently, the mother was a little demanding as my mother and grandmother disliked EM and thought her children were bratty. This is significant because in my experience, older Koreans tend to be insular and think that Koreans are slightly superior to other races. They visited a day or two after my birthday and we had left over birthday cake in the second fridge. We had eaten a third of it, but most of the happy birthday okra calamity message was still visible. It basically read happy birth okra kala. Doesn't take a genius to realize it's a birthday cake. I think it was also a fairly girly cake, so it was obviously for a small girl's birthday. Miss Entitled Mom called her three kids and my two brothers, but not me, to come eat cake. We were confused where she got a cake from and thought maybe she brought some food for once to share. We came down and what do you know, she sliced and handed out giant portions of my cake to her kids and two smaller portions on plates to my brothers. There wasn't one set out for me and all the cake was gone. That was the final straw and they were soon rushed out of the house. They weren't allowed to visit again. Okay, so I might like food a bit too much, but I'm just saying if you were to come into my house and eat my food without asking repeatedly, I would not put up with that at all. I don't know how they put up with the gaming systems plus the food. It's like taking away any part of joy in life. <laughs> Oh, I could not I could I could not deal with that. So, I work at an amusement park exclusive to my town. It's a relatively small park and it's meant for little kids. One day, I was working the boat ride. The way the ride works is that there are about 15 boats that float around in a circle. The boats are lifted up onto a conveyor belt to load and unload people. Since we have to cycle the boats at the end of the day to make sure there are no more people on it, closing the ride at the end of the day usually takes a little while. 
Anyways, it's 5.59, the park closes at 6, and a dad and his kid walk up to the entrance. The dad asks to ride the ride. My coworker, who is monitoring the exit, tells him that we are closed since letting this dad on will extend our closing time and the park is about to close in a minute. The dialogue might not be entirely accurate as I was moving the boats a little ways away and didn't hear all of it and only got the full story when my coworker explained it to me after. Dad. Well, why can't we ride? It's not even six yet. Coworker. I'm sorry, sir, but this ride takes a while to cycle through all the boats and the park closes in a minute. Dad. Well, it's not closed yet, is it? So what's the problem? Let us on. Coworker. Sorry, but we can't. Dad. But my kid is autistic and he likes this ride. Now, I'm not going to argue that the kid wasn't autistic, since he clearly was, I could tell from the way he moved and walked, but why should that change our answer? At this point, it is 6 o'clock and the loudspeaker announces that the park is now closed. Coworker. The park is officially closed now, I'm sorry. Dad. All the supervisors here know us. I'm sure they would be very upset to hear that our needs are not being taken care of. Coworker. Like I said, the answer is no. Dad. Call your supervisor right now. If you won't let me on, I want to speak to them. At this point, we just let them on because getting the supervisors involved would have been much more of a hassle. The entitled parent won this round, sadly. Look, I 100% understand why the dad would be wanting his child to go on there, especially because people with autism are pretty obsessive with interests and if they really like the boat ride, that might be like the highlight of his day and everything. But the thing is, it's on the dad's end to not be there one minute before the ride closes. Let me know what you guys think about that. To preface the story, I work at a large supermarket. This incident happened at Christmas when we were all ridiculously busy and stressed trying to keep up with customers. I work on the checkouts, which were absolutely rammed that day. I had just started my shift when Ian immediately raced for my checkout just as it had opened. Me. Hi, how are you today? Ian. Hi, I'm not buying anything. My daughter picked up this bow off the floor and we were wondering if you could tell me the price and show me where more of them are. Note, at this point there were already at least three customers queuing behind her with full shopping trolleys. Me. Sorry, but I believe this is someone's lost property as it belongs to the child of one of our regular customers. I work a lot, so I recognize the bow. And we don't actually sell those ourselves. Her kid is holding the bow and is trying to put it in her own hair. Me not believing that she wouldn't try to walk out with it, ask for her to hand it over. Me. I can hand it in to customer services for you to ensure that she gets it back next time she comes in. Her kid starts crying at this point because I'm asking for it back. EM to EK. Don't cry, EK. Mommy will get it for you. To me. Could you possibly call a manager? Surely they wouldn't mind if we take this small thing just this one time. Me. Sure, no problem. A manager was literally just walking past at that point, so I called him over. Manager. Hi, everything okay, OP? EM. Hello, we found one of your items and your employee won't sell it to us. Manager looks at me weirdly because he also recognizes it and knows we don't sell it either. M. Right. Can I take a look at the item and I'll see if I can get a price for you? EM. Lovely. EK, give it to the nice man. He'll make sure you get it. Thinking they've got their own way, they hand over the bow to my manager and the EM has this nasty smirk on her face as she looks at me while her daughter is handing it over. Oh right, now that I got a closer look at it, I've just realized we don't actually sell this item and I also believe that it belongs to one of our regular customer's children. So, unfortunately, I can't let you have this item as it's lost property. I'm going to put this someplace safe for them for when they next come in. Sorry about that. Manager walks away with the bow while the EK bursts into tears and starts screaming bloody murder. EM gives me an absolute death glare. Me. Was there anything else I could help you with today? She just makes a sort of hmm noise and starts dragging her kid off while muttering about getting in contact with her head office. The customers in the queue were all trying not to laugh as she walked off. Ah, I love working in retail. And that is why the manager is the manager, because he has learned how to work with people who are completely unreasonable. He knew from the get-go that they were not about to give that bow up, so he knew how to play them perfectly. Very good on the manager. I've debated with myself about sharing this story on here over the past several weeks because of how upset I still get over the situation. 
I care deeply about the children I work with, no matter how challenging their behavior is or what their obnoxious parents are like. I love working with kids who have special needs and struggle with their behavior. I remember what it was like to be that kid so I can put myself in their shoes. Everyone involved in this will be referred to as such. Entitled mom is EM, entitled dad is ED, me, necessary pronouns. Challenging kid is CK. I don't want to call him entitled because I don't think that's fair to him. Cops are the cops, director is the director, secretary is the secretary, and other teacher is OT. Important backstory. I had already been having a bad day. I was working as a floater for this school and was in a different classroom than the incident I'm going to share, and one of the kids from that class assaulted me. Not the nonsense hitting that preschoolers normally do, this kid actually assaulted me. I had a mildly split lip from what he did. He was pulled out of the classroom and immediately sent home. I had had to call the front desk a few times about this kid's behavior because of how disruptive he was, and needing to have admin step in to take over in their eyes was not making me look like I could handle things on my own. Looking back on it, I never should have been expected to handle any of this on my own regardless of how much experience I have with children who behave like this. Some situations are better left in the care of admin. So after I was done in the preschool room, I hopped over to one of the two-year-old rooms. I truly enjoyed being in this class and the other two-year-old room because I adored these kids. What great personalities they had. CK in particular could be very sweet and I felt I was connecting with him really well even though I wasn't in his class every day. OT informed me some of the basic stuff I needed to do and then left the classroom. While sitting at the table with all the kids, CK kept shouting F you at me and I kept reminding him that we don't use that language in the class. One of the other students was repeating what I said to CK and this child was especially upset by CK's behavior. CK resorted to giving me the middle finger. Remember, CK was just over two years old when this happened. Two years old, and he's giving me the middle finger. The first time I told him he couldn't do that, he started doing it to the other children. I reached out and covered his hand with mine, told him he couldn't do that, and surprisingly, he stopped it. It usually took me telling him five or six times before he'd sort of stop other behaviors, so this made me feel really good about my bond with him. CK was insistent on jumping around during snack time, trying to hide where I couldn't easily see him, and generally causing a lot of commotion. Another younger student was doing the same thing, so I was dashing back and forth constantly and it was exhausting. All the while, I'm being as chill as I can be because I wanted CK to have a good afternoon. According to OT, his day had been pretty rough. I wanted his parents to have some good news for once. At one point, OT came back into the room and I asked her if CK giving the middle finger was a new behavior and she said it wasn't and that his parents and admin were aware of it. When I gathered all the kids for circle time, CK participated as well and was really helpful. I could tell he felt good about himself and that was a huge win for both of us. Feeling like things were on the right track, I presented to them all my afternoon plan for them, which was story time and then hanging out in the exercise room, which they really enjoyed. I picked a story about counting and this book was an extra favorite of all the kids in that class. CK absolutely could not sit down for story time. The younger student who had been bouncing around during snack couldn't stay seated either, so I let him sit on the carpet and play with a couple of toys rather than chase him everywhere. He was too young for that class and yes, admin knew that. This allowed me to put all my focus on CK. CK would jump up with such force that he'd bang into the other two kids. He would dart to the other side of the room and grab toys and then throw them at me and the other kids. He went back to yelling F you at me. It was an awful, awful situation. I kept telling him, look buddy, I want you to get your education, so take a chill pill dude and I was saying it in a really humorous way. One of my fave things about CK was how hilarious he could be and his huge vocabulary. Despite his behavior, he had some great redeeming qualities. CK says to me, my education? And I tell ya, his enunciation was so perfect. This kid was a great talker. He'd make a great comedian in the future if his parents give a crap about him. I was like, yeah, your education, now park it. Again, being humorous, but also meaning it. Well, keeping it lighthearted didn't work. CK started getting more and more aggressive. He was trying to rub his butt on the child next to him, trying to jump on the other child sitting beside me. I held my arm straight out so that he wouldn't fall on the other kid, told him to sit down, being firm this time, and he sat back down. Then he jumped up again, and I once again held out my arm to stop him, told him much more loudly to sit, and he sat again. I set my hand on his stomach and didn't say anything, but had a long eye-to-eye -eye gaze with him. 
He seemed to get the message that what he was doing was not okay. Entitled mom and entitled dad burst into the classroom. And I mean burst. EM flung the door against the wall kind of burst. Started hollering at me, don't put your hands on my son. To which I replied, please calm down. EM continues to yell at me, starts yelling at CK too. I saw you push him, she shouted, and I couldn't believe it. I told her I did no such thing, tried to explain the situation and why I wouldn't let him fall, but she declared, I'm reporting you, and ran out of the room. ED stayed in the room and was much calmer with CK. I tried to explain to ED what his son was doing and how I was handling it, to which he said that I shouldn't be working with kids. Again, I couldn't believe it. CK was fine with me because he went right up to me, pat my side, and took my hand. I think he might have been worried about me. That's why I won't call him entitled because he had a big heart. One of my coworkers came into the room a moment later and said I had to go to the front desk. She stayed in the classroom for me. The director had me chill out in her office. These entitled parents were screaming and hollering in the lobby, first telling the director that I pushed CK once, then said I pushed him three times, and then went back to one push. Like they couldn't get their story straight. Admin should have seen right through that. They claimed they had been standing outside the room watching for several minutes. I knew this wasn't true because I did happen to look over at the room's windows and never saw anyone standing outside them. So that was a BS claim. And if I had pushed him three times, why did it take you seeing me do that three times for you to finally react to it? Again, admin should have seen right through this. Edie actually called the police. Well, first he asked the secretary if he should call the police, and she wouldn't answer his question. Then EM told him he should, so he did. EP had an explosive discussion with the officers, who then came to talk to me. They were totally unimpressed with the parents' claims, even before I explained to them what I wrote in the above paragraphs. Of course, I wasn't warned or charged with anything. I could see CK out the front windows of the school, he had a big smile on his face, and he seemed to like meeting these officers. Officers who were really kind to me, by the way. Unfortunately, the director being an idiot who couldn't see through the BS these parents were telling told me I had to be placed on suspension until an investigation was complete. Two cops just told you that nothing happened. Officers are mandated reporters. If they don't think anything happened, why do you? How insulting to have that little trust in me after working with me for so long. And after there had been real instances of abuse carried out by other teachers, which I had witnessed and reported to the director. A good takeaway is that DCF told the director that nothing happened, there was no case, and refused to investigate. When DCF says that there's no abuse, you need to take that seriously. Instead of leaving it at that, the director kept pursuing it until she found someone who would investigate from another state office. Of course, no wrongdoing was found. Sadly, even though I am still employed there, they filled my position, which is against the law. So I have that battle to fight with them. So even though I'm employed, I'm also unemployed. All because these stupid entitled parents didn't like that I wouldn't let their child hurt another child. If I had let him throw himself on this other child, they would have been mad at me for that too. This incident seriously made me reconsider teaching. I never thought I'd be in this kind of situation, thinking I should choose a different career. 15 years of working with kids and this has never happened to me. I hope parents of other children read this and start to reconsider how they treat teachers. The good teachers are giving up on this profession because of how vicious parents can be. Looking back on this, I didn't want to call up front again after having to call up front so many times for the preschooler who assaulted me. I had considered asking to go home early, but the other teachers needed me, so I stayed. I should have called up front about CK, made admin see his behavior and handle it. He wasn't too much for me to handle, but his parents definitely were. And as much as I cared about CK and his future, I still think he should have been booted out of the school. To the best of my knowledge, DCF is aware of CK's behavior and the parents are being investigated. Honestly, this story just makes me really sad because a lot of teachers, you know, they're going to get fed up dealing with children with really challenging behavior like that who are going around cussing and flipping them off when they're two years old, throwing things, just being disruptive and never able to settle down. But this kind of teacher, you can just tell, really does love her students and I'm honestly upset right now over how these 
parents treated her and really how that school has treated her. I think not only is it on the parents in the situation, but the school definitely is not good at handling it. That they were fed up with her for following how she should with protocol and then making her feel like she couldn't ask them for help, which led to that problem being even bigger. And then them not believing her and then not believing the cops and not believing the DCF and filling her position just sounds like a terrible school administration, but that those parents were able to really be the catalyst to that situation is just so frustrating. I've been a teacher for less than two months. School here starts in February and I work in a small school. So I don't have as many EP horror stories as other teachers have, but last week I met an EM and I wanted to share it here. My second grade group is small, so there's only three students. Let's call them Joe, Aaron, and Luke. So last week, Joe and Aaron got into a fight and Joe called Aaron a B word. I sent them both a letter home about the fight, but I was especially concerned about Joe's choice of vocabulary, so I made sure to include that. The very next day, Joe's mom showed up in the school demanding to speak to me. EM is entitled mom, me is yours truly, and VP is the vice principal. The following convo was not in English, so the wording is a little off, but this is the gist. EM. I can't believe you sent a letter home because Joe called another girl a B word when that's your fault. Me. I beg your pardon? Internally. WTF, I've only met your daughter for like two months. You have raised her for seven to eight years. How is it my fault that she called another girl a B word? EM. It is clearly your responsibility to make sure Joe doesn't misbehave in school. Your group is only three students and you couldn't stop her from calling the other girl a B word? If you can't control three students, you shouldn't be a teacher. The VP reminded her in a more polite tone than I could ever that our job is to educate her child, but she is raising her. EM visibly ticked. Okay, whatever. I talked to her dad so he talks to her. I can't control her anyway. If you can't control your daughter, why do you expect someone else to do it? And honestly, I think that is the song <laughs> of every entitled parent. It's that they can't really control their child and in some way expect you to. And if you don't give in to their child's demands, they want to control you in effect of getting their child what they want because they can't control their child. And that is actually going to wrap up an infuriating episode of Entitled Parents. Don't worry, I do plan on releasing another more positive, wholesome Reddit video next time. So be looking forward to that. Kind of cleanse our palettes from the annoying stories. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and let me know your thoughts about these stories in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!